Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we are starting a new concept that we have been kind of um, procrastinating for a while now, and that is called elimination reactions. We'll talk about elimination reactions. Now, the word itself hints us that in elimination reaction, we remove functional groups we remove functional groups and when these functional groups are gone the carbon's valency is unsatisfied so when the removal of functional group happens when the functional groups are removed a pi bond is formed between atoms so we form pi bond between atoms. They could be carbon-carbon atom. They could be carbon-oxygen atom also. Let's take examples of two most common functional group removals. When you have a halogenoalkene like chloroethane, two carbons, one chlorine, and overall five hydrogens, when you have a chloroethane molecule, where the chlorine is attached on carbon number one, by the way, um, it's two carbon compound. You don't have to have numbering here. So you can have halogenoalkene, which are represented by Rx, or you could have an alcohol, which looks like this. I'm drawing OH here. So it's ethanol, by the way. So you could have a alcohol, or halogenoalkane, ROH, Rx. For halogenoalkane, the elimination reaction involves elimination of the chlorine group and the nearby hydrogen. So nearby hydrogen means hydrogens from the adjacent carbon. So the chlorine will be gone and a nearby hydrogen will also be gone. While in alcohol, what happens is that the OH is gone along with the nearby hydrogens like these. For halogenoalkane, we use the condition of ethanolic alkali. We use ethanolic sodium hydroxide, you can say, or potassium hydroxide. What happens is that during the process the chlorine atom is eliminated and it makes a compound with sodium so you will see sodium chloride at the same time the hydrogens will be eliminated and will make water with the a with with the OH part of alkali so you will also receive H2O what happens to the organic molecule the carbon atoms will lose their chlorine the hydrogens are still here, by the way. Let me show it like this. But instead of having only single bond, now they have a double bond because the chlorine is gone and the H is also gone. So ethanolic NaOH is the condition for halogenoalkane elimination reaction. When you talk about alcohols, the condition we use here involves concentrated sulfuric acid so you have concentrated sulfuric acid here what happens is the OH is gone the H is gone you only receive water here and obviously the carbon will make another bond with the nearby carbon so you receive two carbon four hydrogen alkene called ethene so for alcohol, the condition for elimination is sulfuric acid and for halogen alkane, it's ethanolic sodium hydroxide. Let's take another example of a compound. For example, you have a four carbon compound. Let me draw the displayed structure, by the way. One, two, three, four. You have bromine on carbon number two. The rest of these are hydrogens. The rest of these hydrogens I have drawn here. 
you have bromine or carbon number two one two three four carbons it's a halogen alkane so when you perform the elimination you're using ethanolic sodium hydroxide ethanolic NaOH again ethanolic NaOH you could ask me why am I doing two eliminations that is because when the bromine for carbon number two is gone the hydrogens are present on carbon one or the hydrogens are present on carbon three because there are two adjacent carbons carbon one is adjacent carbon three is also adjacent so what happens is that in the four carbon compound one two three four if the carbon one eliminates the hydrogen you receive a double bond between carbon one and two so you receive a carbon one two double bond and the rest of the hydrogens would still be here like this the rest of the hydrogens would still be here like this or if carbon number three eliminates the hydrogen a four carbon compound is still here but the double bond would be between two and three the rest of the hydrogens and the carbons are still the same way so you can have two possibilities you can have but one in but one in or you could have but two in so another concept we learned today is that there could be multiple possibilities from the same halogenoalkane if you could have halogen in the middle or perhaps even OH in the middle. The byproducts would involve NaBr in both cases and obviously water because the H is also being eliminated. Let me write H also eliminated so these are the two possibilities let's have a trickier example imagine you have a trickier compound which looks like this let's number it and then we'll know what it is about carbon one two three four five six it's a six carbon compound so we're going to call it two bromo five chloro hexane now the bromine could be eliminated the chlorine could be eliminated carbon 1 and 3 are adjacent for brominated carbon 4 and 6 4 and 6 not 5 sorry 4 and 6 are the adjacent carbons for the chlorinated one let's understand the possibilities using a tree diagram that we used to do in mathematics cup probability first i will eliminate the bromine in both cases so what happens is that you will receive the same compound but at the end of it the bromine would be gone so the first possibility is that you have these two possibilities so the first two possibilities when bromine is gone let me write bromine eliminated bromine eliminated now you could have a double bond between carbon 2 and 1 so carbon 1 eliminates the hydrogen carbon 1 and 2 make a double bond or carbon 2 and 3 could make a double bond if the hydrogen from 3 is eliminated so it could be 1 2 or 2 3 double bond now in the next step when the chlorine is eliminated you have four possibilities let let me let me show you how see when the chlorine is gone you could have the double bond between four and five so between four and five the five eliminates the chlorine four eliminates the hydrogen so a double bond between four and five or a double bond between five and six in another scenario when the bromine was gone from like was making a double bond between two three you have two more possibilities again double bond between four five because of the chlorine or five six so between four five or five six these are the total four structures let's name them and see whether they are same or not 
in the first structure on the left you can see I'm gonna call it let's let's call it hex 1 4 diene the structure second from the left is going to be hex 1 5 diene then the third is going to be um, hex 2 4 diene and the fourth structure is going to be changed in numbering by the way you can't number it from left now you have to change the numbering you can see that the double bond is closer on the right side so numbering has to be changed I'm going to number it 1 2 3 4 5 6 so here let me show you how it's numbered I'm going to change the numbering I'm going to change the numbering like this I'm going to number it like 1 2 3 4 5 6 because the number has to be closer to the functional group so coming back to the original structure you will call it hex 1 4 diene these two are same structures so here we are able to understand that there are three total possibilities three total possibilities so in today's video we have struck like we have seen so far that elimination reaction involves halogenoalkane or alcohol and halogenoalkane you add ethanolic sodium hydroxide and for alcohol you add concentrated sulfuric acid you have to focus on the adjacent carbon and not only the carbon also the adjacent carbon hydrogen and then we looked at the multiple possibilities let's do some past paper questions let's let's look at question 29 here it says a reaction occurs when a sample of one chloropropane one chloropropane that looks something like this one chloropropane is heated under reflux with sodium hydroxide dissolved in ethanol sodium hydroxide and ethanol we know it is elimination reaction so a or b and the name of product has to be propene because the chlorine would be gone from the nearby carbon a hydrogen would be gone and you will receive a double bond between these two carbons so you will receive a double bond between carbons chlorine will make sodium chloride and the hydrogen which is gone it will make water so B for barrows is the answer let's go for question 25 it says compound X is a single pure optical isomer X is heated with in excess of concentrated sulfuric acid only one organic product is formed what could X be so I know that in option a if the OH is gone from here this is my OH carbon and my adjacent carbons could be this or this so I can have a double bond like this or like this so there are two possibilities the one in purple the one in red for option B this is my OH and this is my hydroxylated carbon there are two adjacent carbons one here one here so I can have a double bond like this towards the bottom left or towards the bottom right so again two possibilities one in purple one in red for option C I can see that there is the hydroxylated carbon in red and there are two adjacent carbons one two but rather sorry three there are three carbons with um, nearby the main functional group carbon so I can have a double bond like this towards top right top left a double bond could be made at the bottom or a double bond could be made towards the right so there are three possibilities for option D I can see this is my OH carb this is my OH and this is the hydroxylated carbon there's only one adjacent carbon so only one double bond is formed so I can see that only option D provides me with single possibility so it has only single possibility that is why it is going to be the final answer because it only provides you with one possibility so I hope the idea of elimination is clear to you guys and in the next class we'll be doing more on these ideas including carbonyl compounds stay tuned guys thanks